Yo guys, what's up? It's Vinayak here. I hope you're all doing very well. In this video, you will learn how to simulate fully a guidance navigation and control system by using Simulink, MATLAB and Flight Gear. You will learn step by step how you can design your own control system, how you can work with navigation like latitudes and longitudes for example, and how to calculate the guidance commands based on results from the navigation Kalman filter. So I will teach you a lot of aerospace topics and you will learn quite a lot in this video. This is my special video for 2020. This took me a long time to complete. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's begin. So let's say it's a Saturday morning and you want to go shopping at H&M to buy a jacket. Let's say you have to go north. That would be the guidance command. The shop is located 10 miles away somewhere and you have to use the GPS on the car to take you there. This would be the navigation commands. So the GPS will tell you to turn left or to turn right. Lastly, how will you get yourself there? Will you walk? Will you take the bus? Will you drive? That's your control command. So GNC is a very interesting aerospace field and it's used every single time a new airplane is designed. You need to have knowledge of control system design, estimation, filtering, along with modeling and simulation. And in this video, I'll be teaching you all of that in detail. If you look at this picture here, this is taken from the NASA Engineering Safety Center or NESC. This is the standard GNC algorithm for a launch vehicle or a rocket, for example. You have the flight computer, which calculates the guidance commands and tells the controllers what to do. You have the effectors, which are the, the vehicle actuators. Then you have the vehicle airframe, which is the, the rocket itself. Lastly, the rocket is connected to sensors, for example, an IMU or inertial measurement unit, a GPS, a gyroscope, an accelerometer. This then sends commands back to the Kalman filter. Then the navigation system tells the guidance systems what to do and the whole thing works at the same time. So this is a GNC loop in different words. So for this video, what we'll be doing is that we'll be doing a missile strike. The missile starts somewhere in the air and it has to come all the way down to hit a target on the ground. The target and the, the start point will be set by us. We'll be setting the initial latitude, longitude, and the height, along with the target, latitude, longitude, and the height. And we'll be using the whole GNC design procedure to calculate the flight path angle, which you need, which is this gamma, as you can see there. And it's very interesting. So here we have the missile model. This is taken from a company called Raytheon Missiles and Defense. They are based in Tucson, Arizona, along with many other locations around the US. It's a large American defense contractor. They have built all the missiles which America has used in many decades. It's a very big company. It's a very amazing company. This is taken from a paper which was pub published by Raytheon Missiles and Defense by two scientists and that will be linked in the description below. So in this video you will learn how to control the flight path angle gamma by using the missile actuator. You only have one input there to hit the targeted location. So what you will learn? You will learn LQG control design. You will learn Kalman filtering, how to calculate latitudes and longitudes, how to calculate guidance loops and commands, and lastly, how to calculate standard things in aerospace GNC, for example, azimuth, range, distance, blast zone, accuracy, and so on. So you'll be making step-by-step -step a complete guidance navigation and control system from scratch. Let's start. Just want to introduce you to missile defense and some of the notation and the terminology used in missile engineering and also aerospace in general. So this is the horizon. We have the body frame XB pointing forward and ZB pointing down. This is only a 2D, so we will not look at Y for example here. You have two angles, the pitch angle from the horizon. Then you have gamma, the flight path angle. And then you have alpha, the angle of attack, which is in respect to the body frame and the velocity. So the missile is actually moving this way, for example. You have these angles, which you should know. The flight path angle is equal to the pitch angle minus the angle of attack. And this is, this is a, a rule. It has to be done this way. And when you design your GNC algorithm or any aerospace control system, you have to use this notation here. So we have the start and a target. You have the start point at some location. You have the target at some location there. You have latitude, longitude, and height, which you have to define yourself. You have, so along the, 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 the floor, you have your distance there, and you have the height, right? So with, with the Pythagoras theorem, so for example, you know, x squared plus y squared equals z squared and the square root the whole thing. 
after some time you will have a midpoint here so for example it'll be a different latitude longitude and height because obviously the missile is moving from the air now this problem is not very straightforward i made it a bit more challenging you have to clear an obstacle in the way so because this is in the real life right like obviously if you design a missile you, you can just like make it go straight the entire time because it might, might hit something else so you have to evade obstacles in the field of aerospace this is called rain relative navigation trn so this looks at obstacles on the ground and how to escape them so we'll be firing the missile from here and then it'll be coming 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 and then it'll pitch up it'll evade the obstacle and then it'll hit, hit the target so the obstacle location will be defined by us and you will use the gnc loop to calculate how to evade the target so it'll not be done like a brute force method we'll be using a very smart algorithm to do this and it'll be very interesting so let's begin let's define the matlab code so first you can define the system matrices a b c and d which you can see there and it's taken from the paper itself then you can define the states what they are the inputs along with the outputs then the state space model by ss command define the transfer function and plot the poles to see if it's stable or not set the lqr matrices q and r and then run what you have so you can see the transfer function there next you can calculate the lqr feedback by using the lqr matlab command and then print the eigenvalues of a minus bk so that's your closed loop system so you can print the gain as well then you calculate the closed loop system there and define it once again by using the ss command when that's done you can calculate the closed loop transfer function so it'll just be a minus bk right so you can use the same command there next we can calculate the kalman filter so for example we have to define first g and h g is the identity matrix and h is the zeros define the noise covariances q and r which i had done before in my mimo kalman filtering video then define the noisy system and then use the kalman command to calculate the l matrix which is the kalman gain this is once again a steady state kalman filter because it's very fast then you can find the observer poles by doing a minus l times c and you can print them as well very easily so they should be stable and very quick next you can define the noise time constants which we'll use after in simulink so just define it there and lastly you can now define the missile parameters so you have first all the control results That's the Earth radius there. This value is approximate because we all know the Earth is an ellipse. It's not a perfect sphere. The missile velocity is taken from the paper and it's constant at about one kilometer per second. The target location can be set in degrees, latitude, longitude, and height. The initial location, the same procedure, deg degrees, latitude, longitude, and height. Then the location of the obstacle in degrees, latitude, and longitude. We have to first convert degrees to radians to use the MATLAB commands. So now we are going to use the Haversign formula to calculate the distance between the two latitudes and longitudes. This formula is standard and you can just Google it. So just plug in the values there and you can get the distance there very easily. So this is the distance across the floor, it's not the range. So you have to separately calculate the range by using the Pythagoras law. So that's just square rooting things. So just do the 11 target minus 11 it. So you can see that there. Then you can calculate the azimuth angle by using the MATLAB azimuth command. Azimuth is the degrees clockwise from north between the stores and the target. So it's about 52 degrees here. So you can just do it here as you can see there. So that's the yaw angle which you have to maintain. Lastly, you can calculate the initial flight path angle which you need to be at. So then you can run the program. And the initial angle is about 0.11 rad. 
so it's not that much. Let's begin with the Simulink model. We have to first define the matrices A, B, C, D once again because they will be dragged in from the MATLAB workspace. So just drag in the constants there and define it as you can see I'm doing here. You also have to define obviously the LQR matrix K and along with the observer matrix L for the Kalman filter. So just do that here. You can drag in the go to block to make sure that you can then make it look much nicer in the model itself by using the from. So this I showed in my video, the MIMO Kalman filter design. So just define everything there and then you can start to build the model for the style and the filter as well. So let's use the matrix multiply block to accomplish this. So we have AX there. Uh, drag in the sum so x dot to x so we take the integration of that and drag in the from block so this is we'll just bring in from a b c and d so once again we have x dot equals a x plus b u just as normal state space model there we have y equals c x plus d u so i'm doing y right now And then we have the feed forward term du, so d times u. That's the input there, b times u, so just drag in u once again. And we have u there as the same single actuator, so we have d times u, so that's y there. Then we can drag in some noise, w, so that's for the process model, that's the x term. Reshape that into a 2 by 1 matrix or an array. And then Assign DT1 as the sample time, which we defined in the MATLAB model before. So copy and paste that for Y because we have CX plus V. This is V here. So that's the noise for the measurement. And once again, we can design our Kalman filter. It'll just be a copy of the system. So it is simply X hat because X hat is the estimate of X. It'll be x hat equals ax plus bu plus l multiplied by y minus cx minus du. And you will see what I'm doing here. It'll represent that. So, so that's our x hat there. So it's pretty much a copy of the system, right? Because that's how an observer works. So drag in the y there. But first we can uh, just put a go-to block for the du term. It'll make our model look more neater. So connect that to du and once again from du so just adding it to that so what we just did is y minus cx minus du okay and then we can connect that to the l so it's l time times y minus cx minus du so that's our model with the filter um we can just put a block around it define it as the filter so that's the filter there. It looks, I mean, it looks normal, I guess. <laughs> so, and we can do some connections here. We can extract some values from this Simulink model, which we can then use as outputs. So that's Q hat there because it's the second state from the output. So it's the second one. So we, we obviously have to do a demultiplexer. We can calculate the error. So that's Q minus Q hat from the Kalman filter and it has to be around zero. So from Q we can get the angle by taking the integral of that. I'll just move it around. So we can also extract the states. So that is, is the angle of attack AOA and Q and we can once again extract the angle from Q. And I will show you guys why I'm doing this. It is to build the guidance model, which will be after. So we would need to obtain both Q and Q hat. So now we have the feedback gain. So that's the LQR controller there. So we have to connect that back into U. So it'll be R minus KX, right? So that's what we're doing. KX hat. I'm just extracting more values here. I'm extracting the actual outputs A, Z, and Q there. So that that's the from the Y equals CX plus DU expression. 
I'm just putting some output blocks so we can build our subsystem very neatly and it looks very neat. So then we can define our set point. So that's the desired queue. So the commanded queue, right? So that's our set point. So that's our model there. It looks pretty decent. Um, we can just reshape these now because Otherwise, you may get errors in matrix multiplication. You have to define an array as a matrix in Simulink, I think. At, at least for me, I had to do that. So in my version of MATLAB. Uh, drag in some terminator blocks because those will not be outputted. So they have to somehow not export. So drag a block and create a subsystem there. So that's our missile model with the LQG controller. So that's our innermost loop. And now we can define the second loop. So this will just put a negative one for proportional gain as a PID controller. Put a saturation because we, we don't want the commanded pitch rate to be too high because that will make the missile move too fast. So now we're doing the outer loop and we connect the estimated angle, the pitch angle. And we can define our, our co commanded pitch angle there. So we have this going on. This is a two loop control system. Let's uh, drag in a scope and do a, a run. So it tracks well, we have, it achieves one, so that's good. So we can now do it for the flight path angle, which we need. And from the expression, you can then extract the commanded pitch angle from the angle of attack. So just uh, calculate the flight path angle here from pitch angle and the angle of attack once again. So you have to assign the commanded flight path angle there. And if you run this one, here but first we can drag in a scope to, to make sure we know what that looks like so it tracks well again right so that's good so there is zero so that's also good now we can define the guidance model so that'll be x and z so obviously x equals velocity times cosine and z equals velocity times sine as you can see there so just define that here Velocity is a constant, so we can drag in a constant block and assign it to vel. That's the variable we used in MATLAB, so we have to use that one. Use an integrator block once again to extract. And now z initial equals elevation in it because it starts at a height. y equals 0 because we don't have any y there. It's only in two dimensions for this example. So that's our x, y, and z position in meters. can define the absolute value of z and that that's your height so this block here the flat earth to LLA converts position to latitude and longitude and altitude so that's LLA so we have to use that block this is in the aerospace block set if you don't have it you, you can use the command which I put below in the description so that's the yaw init variable which we used so we have to put those in there You can now build the guidance calculator. So we can define the obstacle location there with the target location as well. And we can drag in a MATLAB function to do the calculation for us. So let's just do that now. So it'll take in obstacle, current and target locations. And you just connect the blocks there. That's the guidance command. And we can also show the location with the display block. So let's define what we need to calculate. So we have flight path angle, range, distance to obstacle, altitude, and the warning command. So let's define the same stuff we did before. So obstacle location, obstacle zone. So that's the no-fly zone, target location, current location, distance to target from the obstacle, range from the target so and the floodlight path angle based on all these values so this will be very interesting and you'll see how I do it here so first let's extract the locations we need so we have a two kilometer zone there so that's your no-fly zone we have the elevation the latitude and the longitude of our current location it's in meters
let's again use the Haversine formula from before to calculate the distance to the target and do the same thing for the obstacle just define new variables and calculate dops now you can find the range from the target So to calculate the flight path angle command is very simple. If the location the, from the obstacle is lower than the 2000 kilometers, you make the flight path angle zero. And otherwise it'll be just the arc tangent. So it's a simple command. So here you can see I'm using an if else statement. I'm sure this is what the aerospace vehicles use as well, like on their machines. So Now we can set the output variables. You set the flight path angle, the range, the obstacle, distance, the warning, and the altitude. So we can feedback the flight path angle, but first we can display some stuff that we want to see. So the target range, the distance to the obstacle, the warning flag, and just connect the flight path angle there. So lastly we can just when the missile height is lower than the elevation target so the target height that's when you can stop the, the simulation so you, you can do this by using compared to constant and then using a stop block to stop it so we have the simulation done here and if you take a look at the model itself you have the complete guidance navigation and control system built into one whole simulink model and that is an, called an integrated system. This is what we do. And I can also run it now. So make sure you first run the MATLAB file and let's compile it first and then let's play it. So when you play it, you will see the range from the target go all the way down because obviously it's getting closer to the target and, and the distance to the obstacle is also going down because it's getting closer to the obstacle. The height's going down there, as you can see. The flight path angle goes down there. And the moment it gets below 2000 meters from the obstacle, the flight path angle will change. As you can just see there, it'll become zero and then it'll get back to where it is. If he, so that's the flight path angle getting zero there. That's the obstacle at 70 seconds, it'll reach it and it'll avoid it. So lastly, you have the pitch rate there commanded. So it does not exceed one. And this is the actuator input. So it's quite good performance. It's about 600 meters, so it is. it does miss, obviously, because you have noise in the system. That's the final location. If we Google the final location on Google Earth, we can plot it. So it is a bit far from the target. It does miss a little bit. And what they do is you have to plot a blast zone. So if we first go to a location and if we plot a circle around it, and the same for the target, as you can see here, you can quickly compare the accuracy. And this is how the blast accuracy is calculated. It is simply... You take two zones and you find the common area. So that's here. And you divide it by the circle area. So we can now do this in flight gear as I did here. And I have many videos on how to use MATLAB with flight gear. So you can take a look here. You can see how you have the missile in the air. It's going all the way down. And I'm playing the whole simulation just to sh show you what it looks like. So it's descending at a flight path angle all the way down. It looks so awesome. Like when... I saw this, I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. I'm actually doing a real time simulation and it's almost like I'm working at some top secret lab at like, I don't know, Northrop somewhere. And you can also do this yourself. So you can see how the obstacle is coming up. It's the mountain up ahead there where the the target pointing to. So it's descending, ascending, ascending. It'll, it'll reach the mountain almost here, so it'll now pitch up and avoid it. So if you take a look, you'll see what it does. So it's almost there at the obstacle. So pitch up now. So it'll pitch up. It avoids the obstacle, and then it'll hit the target. So it'll hit the water, as you can see there. And that's it for the simulation. 
So guys, thank you for watching once again. Um, this video did take me a long time to make, and you can just imagine for a full-scale aerospace mission, so for example, NASA is going back to the moon in the coming years for the Artemis program. It would take engineers a long time to actually build the guidance and control system for the Artemis mission, so you can just imagine how much of work goes into that. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.